Hi, my name is Andy Plemons. I am the school librarian at David C. Barrow Elementary in Athens, Georgia. And today I want to share with you our student book budget project, which is a project I've been doing for several years where students have a voice in adding books to our library collection. This project started uh, when I saw students coming into the library wandering around, me offering them lots of suggestions of books, and then leaving with nothing. And I really wanted them to be able to find books that they wanted. So in that first year, I asked students who were not finding books in the library to be a part of the project. They had their own budget, and they got to add books to our library that they wanted to read themselves. Um, since then, that project has expanded to um, allow students in third, fourth, and fifth grade to apply to be on the student book budget team and I give them a budget each year uh, that comes from our book fair profits and they go through a very long process of um, setting goals and meeting with vendors and purchasing new books for the library. Of course during the pandemic when we were at home and um, learning virtually uh, this was a project that I didn't want to let go of, so we had to find new ways of doing the project uh, virtually um, since we were not in our school. And so I want to share with you a few ways that the project looks in person, but as well as what it looks like virtually, so that you might think about ways that you might use it in your own space. Um, so first is the application. Students um, apply to be on the book budget through a Google form, and this worked the same way in our virtual setting. I just shared this with teachers to put into their Google Classrooms, and students submitted their form for me to decide who would be in the group. Um, meeting, we meet um, kind of anywhere and any time that we have available. A lot of times we meet during um, students recesses as an alternative to recess and we don't do that every single day um, during virtual learning we met over zoom and we did it before the day started so as students were logging on for the very beginning of the day they would start their day with me and then they would move over to their regular classroom um, one of the things that i did for the pandemic and doing this virtually was creating our own Google Classroom. So every single thing that we needed for the project, I put into the Google Classroom as a list of resources that students could go to. Um, so things like the vendor catalogs, the websites that they would need, if there was a login and password, I put that on as well so that um, students could easily access anything that they needed. Um, the first thing that we do in this project is create a um, student interest survey. And this was done uh, through a Google form, which is how we do it in person or virtually. Um, students typically ask things like grade level. Um, they ask students what genres of books they like to read in our picture book, our nonfiction, our informational um, section, and our um, chapter book section. Um, during the pandemic, we sent this survey out over email to all the students. We also um, had students who went virtually into classrooms and the teachers put them in breakout rooms in a Zoom. And so they asked the students in the class the questions and they filled out the form for the students, um, similar to how they would do in person. In person, we go to lunch, we have kids come out into the hallway from their classrooms and we use iPads to gather that information. Once all of the information comes in, we um, take a look at all of that data. So we look at graphs, we look at numbers, uh, we look at comments that people have made. Um, a lot of times in person, I'll print this information out so that kids can really spread it out over the table. Um, but for virtual learning, we created this in the Google Classroom. I just created all of the graphs and shared them with students so that they could easily find um, and look at them on their own and then talk about any noticings they had. So we use those um, 
pieces of information to set goals for purchases so that the students can focus on what they want to order. We invite vendors to come into the school. So Jim Boone from Capstone often comes and meets with us. Uh, we also do a walking field trip to our local bookstore. But during the pandemic, we um, had Jim meet with us over Zoom and students used the Capstone catalog online to flip through and add to the pages. And I just shared our username and password with students and um, in a, um, a student account. So it was not my library account so that they would have access to all of um, that side of the library. We, I created a student book budget account and they added to a shared wish list there. Um, and again, for things like our Avid bookshop that we walk to, um, I just made a Google form so that as students were searching the Avid website, they could fill out the pieces of information that Avid would need to place the order. So they um, just copied and pasted book titles, prices, ISBN numbers uh, into the form, and then that went into a spreadsheet so that students could look back at it later. Once all of our wish lists were created, um, students uh, have to have this difficult time of making a de decision of what is most important and um, cutting things from the list. So that's where it comes um, in handy to have access to this list of books that they've added uh, to the AVID wish list so that they can go through, they can click on the links to the books and see them again. Um, and decide if that's something that should stay or should be cut off the list. For Capstone, they just log into the website and they go through and just delete books off of the list until we hit the budget that we are looking for. And a lot of times kids have uh, big discussions about what they think should stay and what they think should go. Um, and this was done, um, it's much easier in person, but we still were able to do it um, through Zoom and have those conversations and collaboration. Once the books come in, um, I, of course, order the books for the students and uh, let them know when the books come in. We were fortunate enough that we were back in person to be able to do this last step in person instead of having to figure out a way to do it virtually. Um, but we certain, certainly could have figured out ways to celebrate looking at the books um, over Zoom instead of seeing them in person. But what students do is kind of form an assembly line. They unpack the boxes, they check things off the packing slips, and then they decide um, what categories the books should go in within our genre system in the library. They put the label, new genre labels on the books. They scan them into Destiny so they're, they're in the correct spots. Um, and then the most exciting thing for them at the end is where we spread all the books out on tables for students to be able to come in and check out. And then the book budget students are the first ones to get to check out a book. Um, so here you can see lots of them celebrating their very first picks of the student book budget project. So this is a project that I look forward to every year. I always make a commitment to have this as a part of our library budget. And um, it's something that many students continue to do once they start in third grade, they continue on in fourth and fifth grade. So if you have any questions for me about this project, all of my contact information is here. I'm happy to um, share resources with you or um, answer any questions that you have about the specifics of the project.